Hello. Hello, fellow yarn whispers. <laughs> okay, so I will be 35 this year and I am a 90s kid, basically. I was born in 84, but most of my childhood memories are in the 90s and this grungy, smiley face, nail polish bit, it just, oh, it's making my 90s childhood heart sing. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, The Yarn Whisperer by Fallon. This is Fallon herself, The Yarn Whisperer in person. And if you're not already and you'd like to, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, ring the notification bell, and you will be notified every time I whisper something new to the channel. Today's video is another piece, another continuating, continuation, another another portion of my beginner series that I've been working on. This is not necessary. This is not a, this is not a necessity to crocheting. If you have, but I enjoy it so much that I feel like it's necessary that I share it with you. So if you've made a hat before, or if you've picked out some beginner, beginner friendly, um, Ooh, lots of thunder around here. Don't know if you guys heard that or not. Um, if you've if you've done any beginner friendly patterns that require you to start out with a ring of some kind where you're crocheting into the ring, a lot of patterns will have you chain four, maybe five, sometimes three. We'll do four just for the sake of it. And they'll have you slip stitch into your very first chain. And then you'll pry it apart in this hole that is created. Not this here, let me get that closer. Not this bit here, not this bit here, but this hole right there in the middle that's being created. My pinky is shining through right there. They'll have you chain up and work into that. So for instance, you might be doing a granny square or a hat. We'll, we'll go, we'll roll with the hat idea. You might chain up three and then work into that hole right there to do your next double crochet because a lot of people will count that, myself included sometimes, will count that chain three as your first double crochet. So then you would continue working into that hole and over your yarn tail and you would make your way around and it would be the beginning of a hat. Now what I'm going to show you today however is called either the magic ring or the magic circle and I am such a fan of the magic circle once I got a handle on it that even if a pattern will tell me to chain four, slip stitch, work into that loop that it created, I will often find myself going ahead with the magic ring or the magic circle instead of, in replacement of, because I feel like the center gets pulled tighter and you don't have any kind of gap and you can sew the end in and it never comes undone. I have, in the past, before I learned how to crochet, purchased some things from crocheters and they didn't utilize the magic circle and the top of it came undone and at the time I didn't understand what was happening how it could have possibly come undone but as a more seasoned crocheter now I see what the the flaw was and I don't I, I had to get rid of the item that I purchased way back when but um so I'm going to show you how to do the magic circle. If you've done a slip knot with me, you'll know that I like to use these two fingers, wrap the yarn over and behind, and then we carry on with the slip knot by going under the first loop, grabbing the second loop, pulling through, and then you've got your loop on your hook. We're going to do essentially the same thing, but we're not really going to finish it. So let me explain that a little bit better. We're gonna do the loops around our fingers like I just described, one around, one behind. Then we're gonna go under the first, grab the second, just like with the slip knot, but we're not going to let it go. 
we're going to manipulate our hook and twist. So we've grabbed it and pulled it through. Now we're going to twist. Then we're going to grab, this is the working yarn. This is our tail. I've slid some of, one of my fingers out of that loop. We're going to maintain a grip there and we'll go ahead and chain one to secure leaving this loop wide open and then I like to take this tail out of that loop and this is a magic ring and so now you would work into this ring right here and then I'll show you how to tighten it in a minute but first we're gonna go over how to do the magic ring one more time really slow it down this time and stay close to the camera hello <laughs> Okay, so we go around the fingers, behind the first loop, grip it just like we would whenever we're doing the slip knot, take our hook just like a slip knot, under, grab, and this is where it changes. We kind of want to point it down and move it over this way so that we can twist around and we're creating a loop around this hook that's really tight. Okay, so now we want to slip this middle finger out and we want to look for this piece of yarn. That's the working tail, the working yarn. This is the tail of the yarn. This is the working yarn. We can slip both fingers out if you're very careful. And you want to grab the working yarn and you want to do one chain, and that's to secure your magic ring. And if you need to rewind this and watch it again and again, feel free, start the video over, whatever you need to do. So then, I'm gonna show you how to work into it, and then I'll go over this one more time. So I'm going to very quickly create, I don't know, somewhere between eight and 12 double crochets into this center and you can work over top of that ta tail and when you get to where you want to close off this circle because it is gaping out quite a bit do, 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 do. what do I have one two three four five six seven eight nine we'll go ahead and go for twelve ten eleven and 12 okay we're going to grab this short tail and we're going to pull really tight and now you can still see through that what I like to do and I'll get it really close to the camera so maybe you can hear it when it slips I like to wrap my finger around that tail so I've got a really good firm grip on it and then I pull until it's like it slips through a second time you can break it and I've done that before so you got to be really careful but that completely closed up that hole you can't see through it at all just really nice and clean and then you would slip stitch into this look I made a wheel top of that chain three I made a wheel. <laughs> okay, so let's pull that out again. I had it pulled really good and tight. Okay, now to show you the, the magic ring one more time. Start out like you're doing a slip knot. Over the two fingers behind the first loop. Maintain that grip. Still. Under the first, grab the second, and this is where it changes. Twist it around. Think of yourself looping your finger around the yarn so that, doing your finger like this so that the yarn loops around and around your finger. You're kind of doing the same thing, but your finger is the hook. You want to grab this working tail. 
I like to slip my fingers out very carefully. There's the short tail. This is the working tail. Hold on to it and do one chain to secure. And then you see how it's kind of tied like a pretzel. I like to take that short tail and pull it out of the loop very gently. And then you can work into the center. We'll just do a few. And when you go to pull it tight, you'll feel it just kind of go a second time. You feel like you're almost going to break it, but you won't. And that is how you do a magic ring. If you found this video helpful, if you were able to learn how to do the magic ring from my video, please give me a thumbs up, share the video if you like, and thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again on the next episode of The Yarn Whisperer.